vil sveinar heime ber av gøy med det gulde balde, de andre seks på Heidingland og gøy med det jan i kalle. Fri er det ut av Franklande med dyre. Good. All right, everybody, welcome back to chapter 20 of Paladin Warriors of Charlemagne. With us tonight, we have Samson and Tet, or Samson played by Walter Peck, and Renier Lagri played by Tetnek. We did lose one player along the way, but we were making do, and uh, ever onward. And on to the introduction. We find ourselves in the fall, in the autumn of the year 776. Uh, Northern Italy has just mustered a hasty rebellion against the newly crowned King Charlemagne, and they quickly found out what Frankish might was as the uh, Duchy of Spiuli, or Friuli was retaken, and uh, Charlemagne split his army, moving north to the Rhineland, leaving uh, one of his dukes and a few of his trusted knights, namely René Legree in northern Italy behind, to do the mop-up. But we now find ourselves far, far to the north. We find ourselves in the throne room of a, on a castle on a high crag near the sea in Denmark. In a conversation between two powerful men. The Widukind slurped at his tankard of ale before slamming it upon the heavy wooden table. So you suggest I hide a bear in his cave for the winter? Siegfried, king of Denmark, looked at the hulking man. Not for the winter, for years. I am no coward, the Saxon retorted. His eyes narrowed and his mouth was twisted downward beneath his heavy red mustache. You were not there when Idrusil was cast down and destroyed, when the followers of Christ mocked our gods and raped our women and enslaved our men and boys. If wrath dwelt in your heart as it does in mine, my friend, you would think differently. Maybe so, answered Siegfried, but I think not. He stood and descended from his gnarled dice and sat down next to Would You Kind. He placed his own tanker next to the Saxons. My title, King, affords the luxury of certain perspectives, he said. Perspectives that you may not be privy to, yes? You are, you are mighty, and your prowess in battle, Would You Kind, is unmatched. But what of your later years? Have you given thought to your twilight? Yes, said Would You Kind. I have. I have dreams every night. My enemies driven before me. The lamentation of the women fills my ears. It is sweet to me, and I relish in it. Nay, replied the king. Those dreams are of a child. No man outpaces time. There will come a day when your muscles and sinew fail, and unless you have built something that lasts, you, would you kind, will fail as well. He places a thick arm around the Saxon. Against the Franks there can be no victory, at least not yet. Bide your time and build loyalty in the north. Forget the traitorous cowards that even now defect and swear allegiance to the Christian God. Wait until Charlemagne is spread thin, then pounce. Widukind nodded somberly and finished his draft in a single gulp. Now we move in a southward direction across the continent to North Italy where the sun is shining and autumn leaves are turning brilliant hues of gold and orange and red reflecting fiery sun as it sets in the west. We find ourselves in, not in Friuli, but one of the other small towns or maybe even a small city in Northern Italy. And we find ourselves as the camera pans down through that dim light of the late afternoon and early evening into a not sparsely but not lavishly adorned bedroom when where Rene Legree can hear a crowd gathered outside maybe sleeping off the morning's drinking or maybe even the night before 
And who knows who is in his bedchamber with him. Maybe alone, it may not be. I'll leave that up to him. But it's been a few months since the main army marched north to the Rhineland, leaving himself along with Duke Bernard of Brabant and a few northern Italians that were loyal to Charlemagne behind to figure out the situation in northern Italy. Take it away. Yeah, Rene has been um, plotting with the Duke, but uh, mostly he's been kind of going behind his back a bit, um, plotting with the Italians directly, and uh, you know, kind of cutting him out of certain conversations and certain plans, uh, knowing that he doesn't want the Duke to take over. Uh, this area um, when he's been doing the hard work um, he's kind of starting to consider to put down um, roots here as uh, the temperature is far more uh, pleasant and he um, is um, has contemplated giving up the life of a soldier anyway uh, for some time he knows that uh, his years are growing as he is almost 30 years old and um, he has no male heirs, no legitimate male heirs at least. And uh, he knows that it is time to think of his progeny and his family line and his sister as well, who is still unwed. Um, he wished to um, marry her to William, but William was still um quite infatuated with uh, Gislinda. He has not heard of the terrible news of his friends. Not much news at all, in fact, from the North, besides the uh, overall situation of things. And uh, he uh, he looks out his, his window and looks over the, uh, the passers-by um, and uh, just kind of takes in the morning As you take in the morning, uh, you hear a knock at the at the door, and it's your squire or a page, and you hear, Sir Legree? Sir Legree? Mm. Young boy from Spoleto has arrived. Well, send him in. Yeah, very well. You may be familiar with him, at least in name. His name is Sir Leandro Vietti. The older uncle of Elena. We oui. send him in. The Duke is with him as well. Are you proper? How many times do I have to say send him in? Yeah, yeah. Hey, not so harsh, not so harsh. You need any more wine? Just rolls his eyes and goes over to the door and opens it himself and peers out. He's in a normal garb, not his armor or anything, but... Yeah, the Duke and uh, Sir Leandro Vietti are kind of down the hallway a little bit. They're, like, in conversation. And they hear the, like, heavy, uh, heavy uh, wooden uh, door open, and they kind of look in your direction. Ah! There he is! Sir René Legree! Sir Leandro, follow me! Says Duke Bernard, and uh, the Duke kind of escorts <coughs> in your direction and, and uh, makes acquaintances. Uh, Sir Grenier, this is Sir Leandro Vietti. He remained loyal to King Charlemagne, despite all the nonsense going on here in northern Italy. He deserves our loyalty and our friendship. A friend of our king is a friend of mine. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, Sir Leandro now speaks up and gives Renier a bow. If the if the stories be true, Sir Renier, then you are in part responsible for the uh, more or less peaceful retaking of these cities. Ah, they are beautiful towns. It is good that the bloodshed was stayed. There are many fine works of art here. Yes, it is, was my uh, intention to negotiate a um, treaty with um, 
the uh, rebels, but uh, they attempted to take my life, and uh, I only had to uh, defend myself, and uh, afterwards we uh, made quick work of any rebels before that he could uh, break out into open warfare. Yes, yes. Yes, of course. And uh, from outside you hear, like, um, let's see if this works, since I'm not uh, angry crowd. Angry crowd? What? Yeah, yeah, there's an angry crowd outside. Let's see what happens if I click this button. There should be a way to get it. Now you can kind of hear it, I think. Yeah, I hear some sort of chanting. Yeah, it's just kind of lower than the music. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, so if you go look outside, uh, you'll see this, like, uh, army kind of coming through the gates. And kind of in front of them are just a bunch of prisoners. Um, most of them are kind of bound. Uh, their their hands either shackled in front of them or, or tied with um, kind of coarse-looking rope kind of behind their backs. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir, Sir Leandro kind of peeps down from this balcony here. Um, uh, he says, Ah! The prisoners have arrived! He says, Ah! Despite the overwhelming numbers, there are those who maintain their loyalty to the rebels. These are from but not only Spileto, but other territories here in northern Italy. Benevento in particular, far to the east of here, <laughs> where it was there was bitter fighting at the end. Duke Bernard was uh, kind of there at, at uh, Benevento before it fell, and he says, indeed there was. We lost many men. I am not going to counsel that we take any mercy on these prisoners. The common soldiers will be put to death. And we will ransom back the nobles at a hefty price. <laughs> Rene, so, Rene is they're, your... They're Go ahead. <laughs> put, to, put to death? Why? See, put them into captivity? They will not uh, bring any... Uh, Reward if they are simply rotting bodies in a pile? No reward? There's no reward to be had, says uh, Bernard. These noble families here in northern Italy have emptied their coffers into the Byzantines to the south. They may ransom back one or two prisoners, but they have no gold, and I am not a bank. Renier? We should send them a message. I think not. I think it will uh, aggravate the populace. These people have families. It is best if they do not see such uh, bloodshed. I suggest uh, sending them north. And, uh, and uh, what, is, what is that uh, town where the slave trade is that we were at? Hmm. Viv starts the V. Verdun. 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 Yeah, Verdun. Yeah. Uh, we were seen to my uh, friends, uh, my friends' home in Verdun, and this would be a good place to uh, perhaps make some coin. And these uh, these rebels will um, no toil for many years, and they will think about uh, their evil ways. I can handle this if it is uh, not suitable for you, my duke. As you say that, uh, Elena kind of walks in behind her uncle, stands at her left side, and kind of looks to the duke. Indeed, she says. Duke Bernard surely is full of vengeance, for he lost many good men to the east of here. But, my good duke, my lord, as Sir Renier says, there are, is more than one way to send a message to the populace. And I have many friends and allies who saw no way out of this war besides casting their lot in with the Byzantines. Uh, the duke, like, puts his 
hand on the heavy like oak door of the room and slams it shut on his way out. He just kind of says, We did not build this empire across all of Europe by making friends wherever we went. We did it with blood and steel. We'll see what King Charles has to say about this. Bloodthirst may be on his mind after he deals with the Saxons. And he, uh, he leaves the room. Sir Leandro kind of says to you, Are all Frankish men so ill-tempered? Only the ugly ones. And he smiles. <laughs> Give me a romance roll. Oh, God. That's a courtly <laughs> skill, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's my glory? Let's see. Is it five or six? I can't remember. Five, okay. <clears throat> no. Not quite. Big time negative. Yeah, Elena, Elena says, Your estimation of yourself, Sir Renier, Renier, may be somewhat inflated. Or it may be from the many months on the war path. Perhaps I can arrange for one of our clothiers to see you. You would look much better in a new pair of... a new doublet. <laughs> he just kind of shrugs. Oh, perhaps I am ill-natured as well. Mm. Yeah. You did march right into the lion's den and spoke with my uncle. Uncle Leandro's brother, no less. But you can trust this man. He is... Not murderous, like that dog who killed my father. And you can see uh, Leandro's eyes kind of harden somewhat. And then he says to Renier, All jesting aside, Sir Renier, I am somewhat nervous if the Frankish men Charlemagne leaves behind are like Duke of Brabant. We are a gentle people here in northern Italy. We are accustomed to self-rule. You will not take kindly to an interloper, especially one so heavy-handed as Duke Brabant. And what would it take to uh, ease the population? Uh, their, uh, their feelings towards whoever is uh, ruling them? Uh, Duke is, do I know if Duke Brabant is married? Uh, yeah, he's I married. I assume he is, sure. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the king has not uh, given me any special rights here besides uh, to do his bidding and the duke is technically my superior but uh, I think that I can sway his course this is uh, entry mm -hmm. it's another courtly one huh? 14, oh for 14, him crit. yeah for crit yeah. ah okay let's think let's think um, so you, you, you I, talk. Does he make, know what I'm laying down here? You know, I Do think you know so. Okay. I think, I think, I think I want to make Leandro a very, uh, not untrustworthy character, but extremely perceptive. Uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, you, you can look at his picture. He's not like the handsomest, maybe. <coughs> but maybe, maybe he's very, uh, Five head. very good with words, very <laughs> conniving type. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think he's picking up what you're putting down. And so he, he leads you line, along the lines very subtly in the conversation without saying it, trying to judge what Charlemagne's plans are for the northern, the northern provinces of Italy. And he says again, We are accustomed to self-rule. And if this empire King Charlemagne is putting together has any chance of lasting a hundred years, he needs friends, not enemies. Brabant, I think, is a fool. Perhaps you would be more accustomed to lead. I certainly have a uh, better disposition with uh, our allies and friends. I see no reason to put uh, hundreds of people to the sword. And I think pragmatically I like uh, coins in my coffers and uh, less bloodshed, as I have said. Elena says, Sir Leandro has dwelt to the east of here. 
in Benevento for many years. He is well liked there, Sir Renier. I am sure if you supported his bid to rule Benvenetto to King Charlemagne, then his loyalty would be yours for life. Leander nods. The Vietis have a long and storied history here in northeastern Italy. Uh, and, of course, there are a few bad apples, like my late brother. Thank you for ridding me of that pest, by the way. Uh, do, do I know of this? I probably don't. Uh, do you have a family, Sir Leonardo, or Leandro? Of course. You've already met the jewel of my family, Elena Vietti. Oh, I mean uh, sons, daughters. I have no sons, Sir Nene. I have... See how, see how unlucky he is. Six daughters! <laughs> I have Ooh. six. I have. He says like really dejected. I have six daughters. <laughs> well, I have a proposition then. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps I could uh, petition the king that you take uh, the uh, county of Benetto, and uh, perhaps I would also petition him that uh, you would marry one of your daughters to my brother, Actad. Hmm. Yes. Uh, let's see how old they are. I think Actard's like five years younger than me, so. Let's see. Six, <clears throat> the. 20. Busy. Damn. Woo! That is an so age gap. <laughs> so he wants to marry the two year old? No. He came home from a long war. 17 or 15 would be good. And any 19, 15, 17 or 14. Whichever whichever okay. is his favorite out of those. Okay, let's roll 3. Let's let's roll uh uh okay, we're going to go 19, 15, 17 left to right. These are the apps, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh so it's going to be um I'm going to do Not it's like I'm playing fun. Crusader Kings, the role-playing game. I know, it's right. fun. That's, that's why it's so fun. <laughs> Pick whichever right. one looks the most hail. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is, which, this is, which one has the biggest hips? This is app. This is app for the 19-year-old. 14, 18, 19. Oh, oh man, there's here. some hotties. Damn. Damn. That's... Maybe, maybe Leandro's wife, even though he's ugly, yeah. his wife, because he's rich, right? He got the, he got the hottie. Uh, so the 15 year old still be an app of uh, 18. Um, the, se oh, the 17 year old though, I think that's the one. Uh, Renee says, uh, "I'm perhaps uh, Elena could choose from among your daughters, or together you could choose." Um, but uh, this comes with a bit of a, a stipulation. You see. Uh, if there are counties here, you will need a duke, and perhaps I could uh, assist in that. I have no real, uh, no real desire to return to Francia. Here's the intrigue. This is intrigue stats to see how like. Uh, mm -hmm. Fourteen, thirteen. 14 pretty good so they're all pretty good for the daughters yeah yeah so uh the middle one to be the 17 year old yeah the 13 yeah that's fine. yeah that, that that's the one that uh that's the one that elena uh supports she says ah my cousin my cousin uh nadia you would find her most charming and she is not just a pretty face. She would aid you in counsel, so you uh, aid your brother in counsel, Sir Renier. I think this is uh, a good course of action, uh, and then their child will be your heir. Mm, 
Sir Leandro kind of uh, strokes his beard for a minute. Mm, very well. We need only to win over Brabant and make sure these captives make their way north to Verdun. Otherwise, we had a deal. He will perhaps take I care should of travel. It. Yes, perhaps I shall travel north with you, with you to meet with your king, so I can treat with him myself. Rene, kind of. Hmm, I do not know that I was planning on going north, but I suppose I must now to speak to him and uh, petition for the duchy here. I don't know what the the duchy would be called, but um, uh, Spoleto. Spoleto, the Duchy of Spoleto. Uh, but if he's, uh, if we can, between the two of us, convince him, then we can have a uh, very, very um, profitable and peaceful arrangement here. I look forward to much of this. And uh, there's a pitcher of wine in there. It's uh, like still half full. He pours himself a, a goblet and a new one as well, and one to Elena. A uh, salute, Sir René Legree, to the future Duke of Spleto. He smiles and takes a drink, and he says, Ah, uh, and dukes must have a wife. And he kind of gives Elena a sidelong glance. The wine is poisoned. <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. Do not, do not listen to naysayers that say Italians cannot be trusted. If you seek for a wife, perhaps you should pay a visit to that clothiers I recommended. He chuckles. Well, perhaps you are right. I cannot be a warrior on the road for the rest of my life in my advancing age. Why don't you give yourself a check in eloquence? No, oh, hell yeah, I'm very eloquent. Um, okay. Oh, God. That's definitely going to go up. He says, uh, yeah, he says, uh, yes, one more trip to the north for me. I will bring my children back here to live, and uh, we will see what the uh, king says. He is a fair man, and my duke, uh, Duke uh, Terry, I am uh, quite a favorite of his. He can vouch for us as well. And uh, he will uh, have a couple more drinks of wine, a couple more uh, goblets, and yeah, we'll scheme. We find ourselves in the north. I'm gonna let you role play kind of the opening. Quick of, question uh, How many casualties did I sustain uh, in the LSD battle? Not not too awful. Not too awful because it was kind of like a partial. It wasn't. It wasn't your entire contingent that was, that was attacked. It was actually not that far north of of Italy where you that that happened. All right. Um, but over the coming months, you've you've regrouped. I'll let you role play this, but narratively, what's happened is you know, Charlemagne has taken the host and met up with you, and you've certainly had your had your revenge along the Rhineland and you've kind of struck into the heart of Saxony and you hear rumors that Widukind has, has retreated to the north and is now taking refuge in Denmark which is far beyond at least at this point King Charlemagne's reach and 
there are there is a main host of Saxons, Samson, that has held out, and that you're now in battle with him. But over the last few months, like because your host is so huge and well equipped, uh, more and more Saxon nobles are just converting. And if they don't, you can say what happens. But the ones that do convert, at least for now, King Charlemagne has sometimes given him land and uh, and titles. Uh, the scene begins uh, shortly after the battle, the next morning, uh, as the wounded are tended to. Uh, you see Samson uh, unarmored, uh, uninjured, surprisingly, from the battle. Uh, for the most part, he had taken a, a small uh, scrape uh, to the cheek. And you find him doing something very unknightly, piling rocks, uh, something that would normally be uh, for the peasantry or the levies and you see he's slowly starting the base of what can only be a Karen for his deceased longtime friend William uh, he had had uh, perhaps some of the uh, engineers uh, build a fairly sizable cross from one of the homes that had been destroyed in the fighting they had used some of the uh, larger uh, pieces of timber to erect a cross and now he was beginning to stack rocks at the base slowly building up almost as a, a shrine dedicated to the uh, life that William had led one of piety uh, one of service to both Charlemagne and God and it was a friend that he would not forget for the rest of his days it'd be someone he'd speak of to his children and if he was so lucky his children's children uh, after the victory uh, Samson's heart was full of both anguish and rage and he unleashed that rage on the Saxons over the coming weeks and months as he would slaughter town after town uh, whatever skirmish or battle the Saxons would uh, give he would uh, show no mercy uh, eventually either by Duke or King Command uh, he began the process of after victory giving the choice of conversion or uh, death and while at first most chose death then worship what they believed to be the false god soon word spread of the savagery of samson and while slow at first more and more saw the light uh, both as a practical and eventually spiritual matter in converting to christianity uh, by the end of the campaign Samson had settled into a somewhat disturbing ratio where it usually seemed a quarter of the Saxons would die fighting. A quarter would be added to uh, the slave markets of Verdun. Uh, a quarter would convert to Christianity and the remaining fourth seemed to flee with Widukind to Denmark. And finally you find Samson in the last battle, a pitched battle leading the men of his Red Eagle Battalion uh, to victory uh, for King, Country, and Christ. Tell me how this last battle is shaping up here. Uh, is Charlemagne with us? Yep. Charlemagne leading the vanguard as it is his right, uh, both by rank and skill, is pushing uh, the main force of the Saxons back. Uh, on the right, Samson had been granted uh, command of that battalion, the uh, rear guard, as it was called, and he had been uh, establishing a shield wall. So as the berserkers flung themselves against spear and shield, Charlemagne slowly pushed the center until they started to flee, allowing some of his force to turn the flank of the Saxon attackers and berserkers. Uh, as they started to be attacked from behind, Samson's line acted as the han or anvil, as Charlemagne's uh, knights were the hammer. Uh, soon the battle went from a uh, pitched engagement to a slaughter as the unarmored or poorly armed Saxons were cut down by the Frankish steel. Samson leading uh, the charge, uh, 
unbowed his family's motto as the sword came crashing down on a dual axe wielding berserker's head no mercy for the heathens death and his retinue and lineage men followed behind him leading the last charge of the summer battles give me a uh, battle roll oh no i hope i pass <laughs> A regular success right just regular regular all right give yourself a plus two in this encounter um towards the end knowing your ratio you hear a voice scream out king charlemagne's standard is, is far across the battlefield as are the three boars of duke Thierry of ardon and uh you hear somebody kind of shout out i'm bent on broken nonsense i'll break your teeth I hear the clear voice of Samson, the savage, Samson the Redeemer. Come hither! It is I, Rumble the Stag, champion of Widukind. This like giant guy just kind of <laughs> comes up out of the out of the uh, the fray and comes up before you as this giant uh, uh, war hammer. Um, you guys are both kind of unhorsed at this time, and all around you, his blood is being spilt. But ultimately, the Saxons are kind of hemmed in. It is a dying, it is a dying kind of latch stitch, latch ditch effort for them. And uh, this guy comes for you, and there's no way in hell that he is going to be converted. He is only going to smite you, Samson of Verdun. Impassioned by his hatred for the Saxons. Uh... If Samson was capable of laughing, it would be a contemptible laugh, but he looks at him. Rumwald, come meet your doom, for I slay all Saxons who do not uh, surrender to me or Christ. Come with your pitiful false gods in far before me. He just runs towards you, and it's almost as if you could feel the ground shaking. Because this guy stands like a head taller than you, and you're already huge. He has... Uh, Heavy armor on, certainly heavier than his peers, with these two giant uh, kind of stag horns affixed to the front of his helmet. And he rears back his warhammer in order to smite you. All right. Samson meets him head on, impressed with his size, but it will be to no avail as Frankish steel will cleave through this inferior German armor and deflect any <laughs> blow. Bludgeon. Okay. Not a great start. No. I'm at plus eight for eight, eight sword and plus two already. Is that a drop? Does he drop it? Uh, yeah, he does. That's the a half, one. That's a fumble. The haft, yeah, the half breaks, I think, with the axe or bludgeon. It, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it, yeah, it breaks. Some, oh, that's yeah. a great start. Well, damn it. Just cleave. That's not a crit by me, yeah, but... Cleave through his... <laughs> His axe, or... Let's roll some damage here. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, what a pathetic roll. 14, uh, he has no shield. Let me see this, guys. Armor is... Uh, he takes four. Ten points of armor. As he raises his war hammer, Samson quicker with the blade, uh, swings... And it cuts through the haft, breaking it, uh, making a great weapon of war useless. However, uh, what would normally be a vicious blow is slowed by the, the heavy oak of the warhammer, only somewhat uh, lodging in uh, to his shoulder. Yeah, he brings out um, uh, uh, a short sword that's uh, still same skill. Uh, that's kind of on his waist and the hammer just falls to the ground. You, you might be able to take that as a trophy if you'd like for even oh. more. <laughs> Assuming I win, I, I'll be yeah. taking his, a lot of his as a trophy. Yeah, so he um, roars and uh, going to try to impassion himself. Ooh. 
Love Odin. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Boom, plus five. Yeah, so so uh, you can tell me what it looks like as like he, he split through that thing. Uh, you get him, but he just like gets enraged by the, the wound. Despite not being a serious wound, I think losing what was most likely a very uh, personal weapon of his, perhaps something that had seen him through countless battles before to be so easily destroyed, enraged him. And he kind of draws a short sword uh, from his belt and arms extended. He tips his head back and yells. And Samson, being the uh, chivalrous knight that he is, waits for the opponent to draw his sword before he re-engages him. You just hear it being drawn. I am not cut down so easily. Comes for you. It's Chang Chang and uh, raises the sword. <laughs> I am lucking Man. out. Lucking out. That's 11 damage this time. Uh, that would be 11 damage, yep. And I think he'll get a penalty now. A big time penalty. Uh, because that's 50%. Uh, the short sword, well... Negative 10. Yep. Oof. The short sword, well, it may be a good weapon perhaps 400 years ago in the waning days of the Roman legions is no match for the Frankish longsword in... While he is still quite skilled with it, uh, the range of the Frankish longsword is too much. And through a series of stabs and thrusts, uh, Roomwald is slowly, ever so slowly, being worn down by the superior swordsmanship of Samson. And Samson rears back yet again. Well, he has to actually make a uh, falter. Made it. Finally. Well, this might be it. Might be it for old Rumwold. <laughs> so it's going to be a negative five now. So he had a plus five. No, yeah, negative five. Boom. That's going to do it, I think, probably. Uh, that's 36 damage minus 10, 26. What's it look like as you take him out? Uh, akin to perhaps Luke vs. Darth in Return of the Jedi, the rage of <laughs> Samson is overwhelming. He just starts overhand blows, just furious blows. And Romuald can only do... Uh, the best he can do is hold his sword up to, to defend himself, and finally it's whacked away, and a, a side swipe takes the head from the shoulders. And... Samson picks it up by the antlers and shows it to the Saxons around them, perhaps, that are looking. Your leader has been slain! Surrender or die! Blood. Oh, that, uh... Those sound, those uh, little effects don't work like they used to. The blood splatter. Mm-hmm. You can't see it, can you? It was like a. It wasn't like oh, the I old see days. It, it was like it. Uh, it was. It was there. It there. 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 It was it just is. slow. It was delayed or laggy. Yeah, I bet not that many people use it. They probably don't support it anymore. Yeah. So that happens, and then uh, after Rumwood falls, he just stood so menacing and towering over the rest of the army that they all start to fade away and uh duke tier you can see his horse kind of ride along the rear lines the sections they flee their lines are broken chase them down more slaves for vodun more converts for christ for frankia Montjoy. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm uh, <laughs> if you let me, I'll roll for and see if I can take some prisoners. Heck yeah. 
That's what a battle roll, isn't it? Yeah, let's look that one up again. Uh, it is listed in the part. It's in the battle about, section of the opener. Yeah, it's in, it's in the mass combat part. Yeah, it's nicely. I know it's nicely laid out. Retreat, route, and pursuit. There we go. Retreat, blah, blah, blah. Pursuit. First round of pursuit is handled like normal battle of melee that simulates chasing the enemy off the battlefield. Once the foe has fled, pursuit is more like a hunt. In fact, as much as the hunting role is used. So you use hunting against opposed foe's weapon roll. But so I, I, used, thought were, I thought there was some sort of rule of like how many you would find. Yeah, that's somewhere. Only I know what you're talking about. I just gotta find it. Like you said, sometimes it takes a little bit to find this crap in here. Oh, it's the followers fates. On a crit it's table eight eight. On a critical success, after each complete battle round, each unit commander must roll on the followers' fates. That's where I can capture like an appropriate rank is captured per five subordinates. You just want to roll on that table. Real quick. Yep, I'll roll on that table real quick. That's a battle roll. Not a. Nothing. Just uh, regular losses, I guess. Yeah. And then do a hunting roll, you said? Yeah. And uh, just going to be against... That, that's a crit. I'd say against the crit, then it's nothing. So they all melt away. Um, they all melt away into the woods and kind of leave the field lit littered with the dead and dying. There certainly are uh, are captives, uh, captives of some sort, you know, the, on on the battlefield, just like you personally, your unit didn't. Didn't necessarily get any. Maybe just killed everybody. Uh, who knows? I'll let you kind of role play that. But yeah, eventually King Charlemagne and Duke Thierry kind of kind of meet up on the battlefield, and and you guys all make sure everybody's okay, and and start to heal those who have fallen during the battle. Samson was fortunate, as less than one in ten men were seriously injured or hurt in the fighting. Um, despite defeating Rumwald the Stag, uh, the pickings for ransoms were slim, as Saxons were notorious for being of little worth uh, in terms of ransom. Uh, most of them had skittered away, or those of value had been captured by the hammer of King Charlemagne and his knights uh, or paladins, um, or higher-ranking counts, perhaps. Uh, Samson was happy. A victory was a victory that he has once again left a battlefield unscathed, uh, unbowed, and with another uh, named foe defeated, whether it's Rumwald or Lodovico or the countless Lombardi knights that he had defeated over the past few years. Uh, he cheers along with the men uh, in toast to King Charlemagne's victory. Yeah, they, all the Frankish uh, knights kind of are on the battlefield cheering, and the rest of that day passes and the sun, sun sets, and you're all kind of like in your tents enjoying yourselves. Uh, King Charlemagne calls you over. He's in the company of the Duke Thierry as well. So Simpson, 
You conducted yourselves. You conducted yourself. Uh, thank you, my king. It is my duty to do the best I can in your service and defeat these Saxons who would dare rebel against you. Uh, I also do it for my fallen friend, Sir William, as he was cowardly killed by a throwing axe. I, I feel some sense of satisfaction after a successful summer campaign, my lord. Indeed. There is part of my heart that still wishes we would strike further into the heart of Saxony. My spies report that Widukind has retreated to the Hall of the Danish King Siegfried. <clears throat> Siegfried and myself had had an uneasy peace slow these many years. And I think it is the better part of wisdom to return home to our dawn as the winter soon approaches. But I know your heart and mine, Samson. It burns ever hot with the hatred of Saxons and the wish for reprisal against them and their savage ways. But there is a time to conquer all of Saxony. It just may not be, may not be now. It looks like uh, his mind is, looks like Charlemagne's like probably being pulled in a million directions at this point. Wise words, my lord. Well, you speak true that I wish to punish these, punish these Saxons for both the affronts against my family over the years past, as well as rebelling against your uh, rightful lordship over them. I do know fighting in the winter in foreign lands is not advisable, so if we return to uh, Ardon, I understand there has been many years since I have been able to see my children and I have been told by messenger that my castle has finally uh, been completed. I'm anxious to return to it and see my sister wed uh, to Sir Tristan Bouillon. Oh, of course. Sir Tristan. Uh, that name escapes me now, but the shadow of a memory remains. <sighs> A tournament night, no? He was an excellent knight, but more importantly, at my wedding to the late Rolinga, he noticed an assassin in the crowd, uh, an individual hired by those dastardly Herbomons, and he saved me from certain death. It is a debt I can never repay, but I can try by giving him the hand of my sister, and Castle Herbomont has the dowry. Of course. Of course. Yes, yes. A winter wedding. I can think of nothing more fit to celebrate our victory over these godless savages than the matrimony performed beneath the watchful gaze of our Lord God. Perhaps you should join me in my palace in her stall. Oh, that would be an honor if you get to uh, experience, my lord. I would be most honored. Uh, by that, um, perhaps uh, Lady Giselinda can come with me and my wife, Lady Chaelfrith. Uh, I believe after the unfortunate turn of events involving her recent wedding and becoming a widower, I humbly suggest she marry my brother Baldwin, who is ably, and perhaps you have not heard of this, but just last year he uh, gloriously defended uh, the county of Arlon against Saxon raiders. Perhaps you had heard of it, but... I would not be surprised if it did not reach your attention. Yes, yes. A winter of love and romance. <laughs> ah, the Italian ways are rubbing off on my Frankish sensibilities, Sir Samson. That's two weddings in her style this winter. Yes, I heard of the brave deeds of your brother on the Saxon frontier. How could I or not? That was uh, your winter event, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. It was the family uh, event. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he did a glorious deed, and we decided he is kind of a prelude to this invasion uh, by the Saxons or rebellion. They were raiding within Arlon and the mm -hmm. duchy. And I do not want more congratulations to be left unsaid, Sir Samson of Verdun. 
Kaelfrith, your new wife. She is from the British Isles, no? That is correct, my lord. Uh, she is the sister of uh, the King of Wessex. He kind of strokes his beard. Kind of uh, this CK3 machinations running through his head on how to use this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is always good to have allies, Sir Samson. Rumors of the warring kingdoms on the British Isles are ever in my ears. Just be careful. I'd rather not get pulled into their petty wars. Let them stay on their side of the channel. Oh, the King of Wessex is uh, very concerned with uh, his own Saxon problem. He's been dealing with them for some time. I believe... Uh, his interest will lie on that side of the uh, uh, isle as well, my lord. Very well. And uh, if there's nothing else, I'll wrap up that campaign and over the next few weeks return to Herstal, which is... Uh, I just want to... Uh, I think I downloaded a couple maps. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull them onto this slide here so just to kind of get your bearings like um where in modern europe we're we're talking about all these places are it's uploading oh it's huge huge there you go so uh i circled so aachen um is is one of his palaces you know where aachen is um bastone is right here Cologne is there, so her stall is kind of in between. Um, it's actually on. Uh, it's actually on this map too. Let me show, delete that. We're southwest of Bastogne, right? Arlon or Ardon is. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole thing is is a Duchy of Ardon, mm -hmm. but uh, the her stall I think is up here somewhere. Yeah. There, yeah, there. And Aachen's here. And so that's where we're going to do winter phase and hold winter court. And if everyone remembers, my castle is the T intersection just west of Arlon. You're like down here, right? Somewhere? Yep, yep. Uh, let me put a little castle. I bet I can find a little castle icon. I think I tentatively named it Triarch. Until I find a French word that's better. Menage a trois. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm sorry. You're talking about your ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, my ex-wife and my ex-lover. Here's a here's a big castle. There you go. It's pretty decent. Yeah. What's the name of that fat boy? I'll put. It, I'll write it on here. So I'll make that part of the map layer. T R I A R C H. Text we'll use. Merryweather. How do you spell it? T R I A R C H. Good. Perfect. There you go. And uh, give me a little bit of role play, and then we can move on to. As uh, they yeah. move, as they move west uh, from Cologne. Uh, to Aachen and his winter palace. Uh, Samson spends time with his wife dutifully doing his duty to please that booty uh, at night <laughs> while also uh, hyping up his brother Baldwin to Lady Gieselinda. Um, 
maybe yeah. getting her ready for oh, uh, <laughs> <Fluffing> her. <laughs> a wedding. Basically, yeah, subtly, well, not dogging on Sir William, letting her know that uh, Baldwin is much more virile uh, and younger, while still a uh, chaste and holy man. And more importantly, um, that it was Samson that got the rumors being spread by the former Duke's wife, or now deceased Duke's wife, to uh, end. And that's the kind of thing that she can expect being a member of... Uh, his kind of extended family. Yeah, Renee yeah. Um, comes up from Lombard with a contingency in uh, the Duke as well, and uh, brings Sir Leandro and Alina with him, um, and his uh, his own knights and lineage men and such, the retinue. And uh, he heads to Herstal uh, once he hears that that is where Winter Court is being held, and he needs to talk to Duke Thierry and the king as well, anyway. So uh, he heads with the Duke and uh, whatever force they deem to take with them, leaving enough to garrison the three counties that they have control of currently. And he brings all the slaves with him, of course, and drops them off at uh, uh, Verdun. Verdun, yeah. yeah, on the way. Yeah, and, I think, uh, think it'd be on the way. Tell me how much I make from that. For a lot. Yeah. I'm sure I don't get it all, but I mean, I probably actually have to take it to the king and offer it to him. It's his money, technically, and he can give me what he wants out of it, I suppose. Yeah. That, that is what I'll do, actually. You can tell me how much that is when appropriate. Yeah, we'll figure that out. All right. Give me... Uh, get your PDFs open. It's the winter phase. I'm going to go take a leak real quick, and I'll be right yeah. back. See if I can kill my wife by knocking her up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I can't even do that. I, I don't have anybody I think, to... I think that's less likely to happen because you're rich, though, right? Um, it's real. It's chance. It's yeah, basically that one you have a ten per. Yeah, no matter how much money you got, you got a ten percent chance of your wife dying. Yeah, that's just your kids. Like, yeah. So it's basically. Well, I've just had the page turn it. Um. Yeah, fifty percent chance of no birth. Um. 10% chance of the mother dies, 5% chance that the child dies, and then 13 to 19 is a healthy child, and 20s plus is a twins. twins. And like you said, you know, what is it? Um, childbirth being superlative is plus two, which is always nice. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go grab a water real quick while Bo goes to the bathroom here.
freaking cold in my basement. I got shrinkage. He's got shrinkage. Like a fighting turtle. All right. He went to get a water. Wonder phase. Aging. Yeah, he went. He who's thirty? Uh, me. Oh, hold on. Actually, uh, yes, I'm thirty. Is it over thirty or Is thirty or more? You have to do aging this round. Okay. Fine. What page is that? No. Not 74. You know, wait for him to get back. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. All right, I'm back. Well, I'm about to roll aging. Oh, boy. 14. Uh, okay, I lost one attribute. Roll 1d6. I lose none. You lucky motherfucker. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm I'm still hail. You I'm in good. my prime. Yeah, that's right. Are you thir you're not 30 yet, are you, Samson? No, he's no, like 25. I'm, what, okay, what year is this? Is this 776? It'll be 777. Mm -hmm. And you, you increase your age like actually after the new year. That's how they do it. So my character was born in 750. So if it's going to be 7, be I'll be 27. Yeah. It'll be 27. Three more years. Might make it, might not, depending if you guys want to take part in that Battle of Roncevaux or not. Uh, okay, aging is done with Tet. Um, economic surf circumstances, Fife management. It is a normal year. I'll probably just do superlative this time, since I'm living the high life in Italy. Yeah, I think I think we might do a little math. Here at some point so tonight. let's see yeah, it's I'm a normal ready. year uh, it's phase one so that's plus one my standing was my retinue is 16 or greater so that's plus five so that's plus six to my roll we said harvest was normal okay so if your if your retinue is 16 or higher you get plus five yep okay and that's the stewardship role yes yes all right, so my stewardship for my steward is 16. So I'll go ahead and roll 16 with a plus six modifier. I'll just do it on my sheet. Whoops, that's not what I should have done. But it's, it's 12 versus a 19, so that's a success. That's not a crit. That's um, wish it was, but uh, so it's a success. Not a critical success, just a regular success. Because my guys is sixteen plus six is twenty-two, so I'd need an eighteen or higher. All right, so uh, six libra per manor. Now, while well, you're not in control, there's 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 Italian places. Well, you said is what? Am I in control of any of them? Yesterday, not yet. Okay, that's fine. Not okay. Not yet. I don't then. think you would. You're not. You you you're not like going to be taking income from it. Yeah, that's yet. fine. That's fine then. Yeah. Um, if he gives you the duchy, you would. Yeah. So okay. So superlative. Um. That's thirteen lever cost plus thirteen glory. 
And I'm going to bring a couple more uh, specialists into my... Uh, do, do you mean to add the glory onto your characters, or are you doing it? Uh, I'm keeping track of it I'll, on a piece I'll of paper right it. now. I'll put, the end, I'll put it at the okay. end. 30, okay. 33 for glory, and I, it costs 13. So mm -hmm. 85. And then we get whatever, right? 5 times 6 minus 1 for the steward. That's part of your superlative, yeah. Or not part of your superlative, sorry. Just normal cost. So 85 plus 29. I'm going to bring up, side note, I'm going to bring in a chaplain and spy to my entourage. Yeah, bringing a spy in, that, that sounds like good to me. How much does that cost? One each. So like mm -hmm. I have an engineer, a steward, a spy, and a chaplain. So that's minus four Libra. You guys are flush enough, man. You can just hire them all. I just did the math before this off season. I have 57 Libra just sitting around, so I can afford it. I have a lot more than that. You weren't somebody's building big, a castle. That's true. Some of these big castles. So how, how do we castles. figure out what uh, what skills they have? So, it is uh, on a page, and then every year you get to roll what, what for page it. Is it? It's, 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 the, it's the page that talks about all the costs. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. I'll just put it in there and then figure that it's out It's page 204, and I'll, yeah, the starting skills are on there. Okay, I'll figure that out. Uh, he's... Yeah, it's, it's a chapter that talks about wealth and stuff. Can I just roll for my um, my steward right now to see if he gets it so I don't forget? Since he, he yeah. did pass his, his test. Uh, he'd be higher. Oh my god, give me a break. Here, let me roll for... I'm going to roll for my... Uh... And two guys while we're thinking about it. Your guy sucks, Ted. Yeah, he does. He's only got a 13. I won't roll my other two since I just hired him, obviously. Hold on one second here. Where'd I go? There it is. All right. So my steward is a value of 16. Nope, didn't pass that. And then uh, Siege of 15 for Herald of our Loans. Let's check that out. I'll get an engineer too, why not? Chaplain, nope. however, I don't need that kind of guilt. Can I chaplain for prayers? What's wrong with you? All right, <laughs> good with that. All right, survival. We won't do horses. Okay, let me. Uh, I'll go, since I have the most, I'll go through them. Um, what's her age? What does it say? Um, well, if you're doing rich, um, none of them can die. The only people can get die if they're fifth or get sick. They can't even die. Are fifteen and older, or one to two? And I have one child in that range that could technically be ill so i'll roll that real quick i don't think i do i don't have somebody has somebody I'm... ill from last time no we nobody was ill last time remember i rolled it but i i was uh rich oh you're and right. it couldn't, yeah, couldn't get right. ill so um yeah i have none all mine are like five to four to like seven in age so all right personal events then yeah Yep. Yeah. yeah, you go first. All right, personal event. Let's roll. Uh, oh, did you roll? Is that what that is? No, I'm rolling right now. Three. Three, forgiving. Let's roll the old forgiving. Yes. Success. Oh, as soon as I got to the palace, a member at court inadvertently insulted me, but I forgave his clumsiness by turning it into a little joke. Check forgiving. Merciful. Yeah, actually, there's a uh, somebody uh, there that you don't recognize, and uh, he's not familiar with their culture at all. Um, it's the this dude. 
How did he offend you that he had no clue how he was offending you? It's the Wally of Saragossa. Oh, my good lord. <laughs> uh, my, younger than maybe some of the other more distinguished knights that have been invited to King Charlemagne's Winter Palace, uh, perhaps uh, despite his rich uh, and lavish form of dress, he was uh, mistaken as a, a servant. And uh, then Samson, you know, kind of forgives him, understanding he's a foreigner. And he's, ha, we are all servants to God, my friend. I am not offended by your simple mistake. It is not like you are regular here. Please uh, share wine with me. Tell me of your lands. <laughs> All right. I pardon, pardon me. I, I did not mean offense. Yes, I come from far from the south of here, across the mountains. My title, the Wally of Saragossa, a beautiful land filled with olive trees and mountains and verdant valleys. Yes, another glass of wine, eh? <laughs> Indeed, my friend, please tell me of this place. I am interested to hear it. And he kind of sits there and listens to the... Yeah, he's, to the he's telling you about it. And he keeps he keeps mentioning a name. That he just seems to not like this guy. And he, he says, he is an upstart. He is fermenting rebellion. Uh, soon on your southern borders, there will be disorder. I am here to speak with your king to request aid in our struggle. <laughs> ah, very interesting, my friend. Mm. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm merciful, and I succeeded. Um, so, mm, that's, that's our rival right. neighbor trespassed on your rights, but you show yourself magnanimous, magnanimous, and settled this dispute by a common accord. Um, so, I was thinking that uh, perhaps. Um, Either Ermeline, one of Ermeline's uh, relatives were giving me issues about like owning the manor um, mm -hmm. inherited from her. And I um, basically, maybe there was a part of the land that they wanted like a forest to hunt on or something. And uh, mm -hmm. through Actard, uh, who is running my estates in, in Frankia currently, he... Uh, he agreed to allow uh, them to do this uh, on certain certain weeks or something like that, paying him a small stipend to do so. Very good. You can hunt here, but only on holidays. Right. <laughs> something like that. Uh... Your your cousin is a hoe. <laughs> Marriage? No. Uh, we already know. I got lots of marriages going on, just none of mine. All right, let's find the NPCs here. Uh... Actard needs to be in there too, I think. I don't think I have a. And Nadia. Maybe she didn't come with. Actard might not be here too. You don't have to deal with that. That's fine. Yeah. I, I don't even have a picture for Baldwin. Don't have Baldwin. Sir Tristan is around though. Uh, this guy, right? Ah, uh, yes. I think he was the one. Yes, he hey, was. He, who's he marrying? He's marrying my younger sister, Gwendolyn. Got to have any girls, girls, girls for that? Archie. Who, who? If you're wondering. Uh, is very pretty, but has a chaste of five. Oof. <laughs> Man, once she's married, it's not my problem. Keep her locked in a fucking tower for all I care. She's very pretty, though? She bare pretty. Let's see what I come with here. <laughs> doesn't you don't have somebody in girls 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 for that 
Uh-uh. <laughs> Just recycle Ermaline. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. What's her name again, you say? Gwendolyn. G W E N D O L I N. <laughs> I thought, what's her app? Four? Her app is high. No, her chase is five. Her app was high. Uh, okay. he's just, it's he's a different just, time. He's just, he's just, he's just, yeah, it's a different type of appealing. <laughs> See, it's this one. It's fine. This is a little better. Just use Brunhilde the Weaver. She was never anything. I'll use that. That sounds a little better. Who, who is Susanna of the Fields? Is that your... That's my uh, piece. Yeah, she's produced four boys. Here's Glenda. That's a little better. Poor Susanna of the Fields. Lucky lady. All right, so they got married, and then Actar got married to uh, Nadia. Well, that that would be yeah. I'm gonna ask the king if he's allowed to do that. Yeah. And then uh, I thought somebody else was getting married. Baldwin's marrying Jislinda. That and that seems uh, sus. I don't. That ain't sus. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she would do that. She didn't no, get a choice. Not, 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 so, not so quick. I would he, say they would need a courtship. Yeah, she made she made William wait like 10 years. Yeah, and now she's desperate because everybody thinks there's something wrong with her. Give me an eloquence and see if you can talk him into it. Mm-mm-mm. Ah, oh, bum 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 bum. That's a negative. That's a negative. Why do they hold off? That is right for a lady to be in a state of mourning for some time. It would seem <coughs> becoming. Perhaps to marry uh, your recently deceased husband's friend's brother so quickly? No? I understand if you need to wait a while. Perhaps uh, you could care to be a guest at my castle uh, for the summer, being uh, forming a friendship with my wife, Lady Chaelfrith. I'll teach t- Kale for us how to not have sex. Mm-mm. Mrs. Medieval Europe, she don't get a say in it. So Baldwin and Lady Gislinda do do hit it off. Um, they're going to ha- have a period of courtship, uh, but the winter is is spent uh, with a with a fancy wedding with uh, Tristan and, and Gwendolyn. Um. And uh, there is a feast in William's honor as well. Baldwin the Beard. That's a hardy beard, I dare say. Uh, okay. Family event. Oh, I gotta, I gotta try and knock up uh, Chael Frith real quick. Oh yeah, child, child. Oh, I forgot to add two. Whoops. Bal- hey, Bald- twins! Baldwin looks like Jesus. Yeah, that's because he's a holy man, you fucking heathen. Uh, those are <laughs> twins, by the way, so we need to roll. Twins? 
yeah, I forgot to add plus two because of uh, my superlative uh, lifestyle. Oh, man. So Please let's be girls. See here. Be girls. 1d2, 2 okay. is girls. I'm going to roll 1d6, uh, and odd is female, even is male. So here's number one. Girls, girls, girls. Yes! No! <laughs> There's one girl. Come on. Oh! Yes. No! Whew. Whew. You want some names? No, I'll create my own names. I don't trust your <laughs> creepy name generator. It's going to have a lid dead for sure. I'm starting to run out in this game, man. This game has to have the most characters. Oh, oh here, here you go. I named the boy William. Oh, oh, so sweet. William Dave Vardon. That is very sweet of you. The girl will figure, I don't know, Ermaline. We'll figure that one out. I don't know anybody would name her after her. I think you should name her Rolinga. <laughs> Rolinga. Oh, that'd be kind of creepy for <laughs> Jay yeah, Fresh. Yeah. Hmm. What's uh, Kale Fritz's little sister's name? Uh, oh, that's right. I forgot about her. Uh, it's on here. Yeah, it's somewhere. Is is it Macdeld or whatever? No, that's a that's a El Elf Fuggo. Elfswith, I think, is her right? Is yeah. Name? Yep. There. Well, man, there you go. The girl gets to be named a English name because I don't care about girls, and uh, I name the son. William, in memory of my longtime friend and hero of the Frankish people. Did you, Would that be your heir? William is my heir. Got an heir, finally. Uh, yep. Don't have to legitimize those four boys, but I'm going to get them taken care of. Don't worry. All right, uh, now family event, I think. Yep. Give me some D20s, hoes. 12. Warden. You become the warden of an underage relative. You administer his inherited lands and gain one per year until he comes of age. So now I need to see what age he is. What, are, what should I roll? 1D15. Roll D20 to get the family member. It is a distant cousin. Same with me. Five. Two. Does William have any younger siblings? Maybe we could split split his... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even think he... I don't know, think he did, I'm, did I'm that. I'm sure he never did any of that. I can look and look on his sheet and look and see. I have a distant cousin back in um, Verdun. Perhaps it was a manor not too far away from my uh, father's manor. And uh, I received word that uh, his father died unexpectedly um, from a winter illness, a winter fever. And uh, I am now in charge of seeing over his estate till he comes of age uh, he is welcomed into my castle uh, to learn the ways of both being a knight and uh, the role of leadership that he will eventually take back to the manor once he comes of age what did we decide his age was it was five you rolled it right five yeah you rolled it um instead of a distant cousin can i have it someone who's not technically related to me but related to one of my sons yeah. So uh, Adelaide, um, the lady from the uh, that tower that I had Drogon with, uh, is um, becomes with child again, and is un unwed, and uh, I uh, now um, take her uh, bastard, uh, and technically the half brother of Drogon. Uh, as uh, one of my um, um, 
what you call it, a uh, caretaker. I don't know what the word. Of your wards. Yeah, one of my wards. wards. Um, and uh, I will uh, take uh, his money and such until uh, a time where um, he's old enough to have his own lands, whatever those are. So. It's kind of a raw deal for these kids. It's too bad. Might just take all their shit for a while. They probably get murdered before they get come of age, and then they get to keep it all. <laughs> Maybe. I did just give a bunch of Italian kids to a nunnery, so there would be no competition. What you put down, Italian kids? Hey. Yeah. Mamma mia! Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Experience. I'm gonna roll if this is a boy or a girl. One is a boy. Okay, it's a boy. You want to give me a uh, name generator there, Bo, real quick? It's on Italian names right now. Uh, I, need I need a Frankish name. one. All right, here we go. It is boys. Yep. How about uh, Baldry? B a u d r y. B a u d r y. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Baldry, cool. All right, XP. All right, um, personality traits. Oh, real deceitful. Nope. Merciful. Yep. Oh, you're more merciful. But now I get to roll cruel. It goes back up. Reckless. Yes. Dang, son. Oh. You are reckless. <laughs> Valorous finally is going in there. Good. Going in there at uh, like, at dinner. You want to get those ones over sixteen, man? If you see those ones over sixteen, you might be able to ball mm -hmm. five those. All right, so I have forgiving. Yes, I also have vengeful. Also, yes, so that cancels out. Merciful. Nope. Reckless. Yep. Valorous? No. Right into passions. Love God. <laughs> no. Oh. Hate Saxons. No. And finally, Attitude Lord. Also no. All right. Love Charlemagne. No. Love family. No. And that's, I don't have any attitudes. On the common skills? Yep, skills. So when you're, um, yeah, never mind. Yeah, skills. Okay. Uh, awareness? Yes. Um, courtesy? No. Eloquence? Yes. Intrigue? Ah, damn it. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so I have no common skills. Eloquence? Yes. Intrigue? No. And that's it until we get to combat skills. The only one I have is dagger. Yep. Uh, battle? No. Siege? Yes. Sword. Sucks. Yes, it does. Sword. No. And that's it. Yeah, I'm done. Um, Dagger's it? That's it, yeah, because the only, only fighting I did was in the room when I was at dinner. Oh, uh, yeah. 
That's it. All right. <clears throat> Training practice. Uh... So are there different rules now that I'm 30? Or no? It's just you can't increase your... Size, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, training. I'm going to raise my strength to one. One more, to 15. Because that raises Size my man. damage. Si yeah, I, it's, I got stronger by holding up that nine-month-old pregnant chick while I was wheelbarrowing her. Actually, to, no attributes can be increased after 30. That's what I thought. Okay. So, size can't be increased after age 21. So now I'm going to... Is it after 30 or 30 or above? It says... It says after 30, I'm, so this might this would be your... going to take that, uh, uh... Let's see if I do that. It should tell me. Oh, man, that's only one. Hmm. I'm a pretty big dude. Um... All right, con it is. All right. How many HPs do you have? Thirty-one. Now? You have like forty something. Who me? Samson. What do I have now? Samson. How many hit, hit points do you have? I have thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh wait, no, that's wrong. I have thirty-nine. That was my current hit points from last battle, last session. Because it's con plus size, so I have 39 hit points. Are you going to increase, uh, did you increase con as well? Nope, I increased strength to 15. All right. Uh, compute glory. You guys probably won't go up another thousand, will you? I don't think so. I don't think it's so. It's 15 or higher, right? So. 16 or higher. No, I thought we figured out it was 15. Was it 15? Okay, I'll go look in the book real quick. Because I know it's different from the uh, PDF. Let's see. It says... Oh, it says... Okay, it says... Glory or passion or traits over 16. Oh. In, in the book, it says 16 or higher, right? And then on the PDF, yeah. it says over 16. Okay. All right, and we're doing 16 or higher, right? That's what we did last time. Yeah, it's it's a value greater than 15, so it's 16 or higher, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, 17, 16. Calc. Is that it? I think we're done then, huh? Yep, just got to calculate passive glory, and, and then, that's going to be that. Yeah. Don't forget, oh wait, do you own a castle? Uh, I do not own it, I do not. This time I don't have to ask, because I gave Castle Herbamont to Tristane as the dowry, and in my holdings I have the DV listed of my castle, which is 33. Your new one? Yep. Triarch? Yep. Huge keep, double curtain walls, square gate tower. Yeah. I have, I, I got 115 glory. So the other thing you see uh, narratively going on is that that uh, that convoy from Spain has arrived, uh, an embassy of Moorish rebels, headed by Ibn al Arabi, who was the Wali of Saragossa, and uh, partition of the Persian Caliph, comes to ask Charlemagne's aid in his resistance against the Emir of Cordoba. Uh, much of these. Discussions are held behind closed doors, but the, uh, the the rumor on the street after 
Winter Court is over. Uh, is that I Ibn al-Arabi kind of stays in court for the time being. And um, King Charlemagne, it sounds like, uh, has agreed at some point to um, provide aid to the Wali of Saragossa. Um, first, though, he's, you know, he sends out messengers from uh, to much of Francia kind of asking for uh, volunteers to go down to Spain and, and meet with uh, the caliph down there that uh, this uh, Wali, I don't know if I'm even saying that correctly, this Wali has such a disagreement with. And uh, if there's anything else, we can move on to Mayfield of 777. Uh, and you guys can role play any in intermeeting, uh, intervening uh, family events or yeah, I think we have, romance or, or anything else. I think else we have a lot of shit do. to do. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'll, I'll uh, start it off if you don't mind. Uh, Go ahead. So Rene um, arrives with uh, his Lombardi host and his own retinue. Um, he's a bit excited to see his friends uh, Samson and William not probably seeing them for at least uh, one or two years. Um, something like that. And uh, he kind of forgets the spat they had over the king of the Lombards and how Samson tried to kill him. He doesn't even care anymore um and as soon as he gets to Hestal he uh he sees to Sir Leonar Leandro and uh Elena's uh quarters making sure they're all um tucked away and he goes to find uh Samson and William he asks uh, about uh, them, and someone points out Samson, and uh, he heads over in his direction. Uh, he, Renee's looking, uh, he's dressed in, um, you know, a, a, an Italian-style doublet and clothing. Uh, his hair is longer than usual um, uh, than this picture, and uh, his face is clean-shaven, and he waves, Samson! Samson! Kind of like waves his hand above his head. Samson had been sitting in uh, perhaps a, a hall near the fire. His wife, you know, heavy with child. Um, he, much like uh, Renier, is, is dressed finely. Uh, perhaps now the winter is set in with a uh, fine mink uh, lined robe or cape of some kind um as he hears his name call he recognizes a voice he hasn't heard in some time and renier can see there's a mix of um, happiness and regret on his face as before he even gets to samson he kind of says something quietly to chael frith who, who smiles and, and nods as best as a, a pregnant woman can and and scurries off uh clearly there's something samson needs to tell renier in, in confidence and Samson waves him over to a, a fireplace. Uh, Renye, it is good to see you. Uh, please stand, warm your bones by the fire. But tell me, how has Italy treated you? It seems uh, you have taken a liking to it. I almost did not recognize you when you uh, first approached, my friend. You look different, but uh, good. He pats his belly. Is, ah, <coughs> good eating, my friend. Good eating. Eating, did I see Cherylfrith walk off? She was heavy with child. Finally, you are you are making strides to catch up with me since I am uh, apparently barren these last few years. Ah, well, that is something that happens uh, when you are too busy stuffing your face with uh, good Italian food instead of stuffing Italians. Am I uh, right, uh, yes, but, uh, I saw. Where's William? Yes. Well, uh... Mm. You have not heard, my friend. I please have a have a seat. I have some heavy news to share with you, and kind of motions for maybe a servant or a, a page to to bring them a couple of glasses of wine, and kind of sits uncomfortably for a moment, taking a, a large swig, uh, gulps it down before. Well, my friend, I I am sorry. I'm the one to tell you this news, but. Uh, Sir William was killed in combat uh, by a Saxon raider. 
uh, at the beginning of uh, our campaign, not uh, six months ago. I am sorry that uh, you have not been away, made aware of this until now. Uh, Renee's sitting there with his cup in his hand, looking um, quite worried at what Samson's going to say. Kind of ex probably expecting um, some version of what he's going to say because he, you know. Uh, told him to sit down after he asked and looked morose and Renee sits there silent and takes one of his hands and wipes his tears out of his eyes and shakes his head and says I always thought it would be me that were killed first I was wishing more for him he had uh, he had the purest heart of us all that is very true, my friend. He had finally wed Lady Giselinda uh, on the road. It was a lovely affair, long overdue, if I may say. And we had settled in on a town uh, that eve. Uh, we knew the raiders were in the area, but uh, Bo, did we ever find out if it was we found out we were poisoned, or was that just kind of left open? Yeah, it's left open, probably. Yeah. I did not know if it was uh, the devil's hand or the heathen gods or what it was, but uh, we were drugged in some manner, and uh, during the battle, uh, some psychotic Saxon flung an axe, and instead of hitting me, it hit our friend Samson, and I fought and killed uh, one of their berserkers uh, in the pools of his blood. It is something that will sit with me for the rest of my days, my friend. He exhales loudly and loudly and well, I am glad you have enacted vengeance upon his killers. I wish I could have been there. I Perhaps I should have been there. I do not know if there was anything you could do, do and he kind of recounts the tale of, of what happened, and I do not know what we could have done different to uh, save our friend, but uh, I can tell you I built uh, a holy relic uh, in his honor uh, to travel to, and he kind of gives him the name of the, the village and the rough place, and I hope to return to it someday and pay tribute to our fallen comrade. And he says, I am heading back to Lombard after this is done. Uh, perhaps you will come with me and we could uh, visit this grave together. I will certainly visit with you, but uh, why do you wish to return to Lombard? Is not Ardon your home? Do you not have several manors here? Why would you leave? Leans back and doesn't know if he really wants to talk business or whatever after hearing that, but just says, uh, opportunity, opportunity for advancement, and the weather is much better, and I am getting older. You have been old for a long time, my friend. What is this opportunity you speak of? I have made some arrangements and deals with uh, some loyalist Lombards, perhaps to set myself up with a duchy. It is my hope at least I will petition the king so he does not have to worry about uh, Italy any longer. Do uh, you wish to be a duke? I lack the boldness, my friend, but... Uh... Why you, when uh, there are many counts in other dukes or dispossessed of their land that may think themselves ahead of the line, so to speak? Well, because they did not put down the rebellion as I did. They do not have the, well, not the love of the people per se, but the... Uh, but the confidence of the people, and uh, I believe these Lombards are starting to take a liking to old Rene Legree. <laughs> Is that possible? I am very charming. 
Hmm. That is one word that uh, perhaps you did not know the meaning of it, huh? <laughs> but uh, that would be something I would be most proud of to see my good friend Renier become a duke in Lombard and ensure there is no rebellion in the future. Yes, perhaps we will see what the king says, but uh, I have plans. You can come serve under me if you wish. He kind of chuckles to himself. My children of that of royalty, I believe it would be you who would be serving me. I do not plan to travel again to the far northwest. It was uh, even colder than here, no? Hmm, too true. The summer months are nice, but... Uh... Once winter sets in, I do believe Lombard would be a nice place to uh, settle for the winter. Yes, I have my eye on the uh, Italian woman, as you can rightfully guess, and I believe this uh, would be a good match and set me up uh, for success in Lombard as well, and perhaps to have a few more children. Yeah? <laughs> How many is it that you have? Are they <laughs> how many legitimate children do you I have? I have one daughter, Rosfind. If she... and how old is she now? I've not seen her in a long time. Uh, she is uh, five years old. Uh, she is uh, being raised, unfortunately, by uh, my old slave. Uh, I do not remember her name. <laughs> it's a birth <laughs> trade, uh, but uh, because her mother is in the uh, nunnery. Ah, that's right. We shall not speak of old wounds. Uh, God does uh, work in mysterious ways. I am uh, more than happy. It is uh, not a not a thing of consequence any longer. That is good. Perhaps it was a test that it seems you have uh, passed. Is it is possibly you are being rewarded for uh, your humility and handling it in an appropriate manner? Yes, perhaps. God has healed me once, and perhaps now he has healed my heart. If a thing is, happens, uh, then that will bring my own heart much joy. Uh, but if you need my help in Lombard, I will come to your assistance. But I have my own uh, ideas for here in Ardon. Nothing I wish to speak of at this time. But uh, if I come to your aid in Lombard, I hope sometime in the future uh, you will return that kindness to me. Of course, my friend. Let us lift a uh, cup and uh, begin our machinations in this... Uh... Mayfair, and uh, he salutes Samson with a toast of wine. To William, our dear friend, now departed, which we will see again in the uh, when we pass the pearly gates. Samson raises a glass to William, uh, to new wives, both uh, current and perhaps in the future for you, and. Uh, to new adventures and opportunities. Yeah, he cheers. And uh, after that, uh, Rene would try to um, eventually get a meeting with uh, Duke Thierry and the king to propose his plan for... Um, sp sp what the hell is this place called again? Spitalio? Frioli? No, Frioli is the Fri county. Ah. Spa, uh, Spaletta. Spaletta, that's it. Neapolitan? <laughs> Spaghetti. <laughs> Spaghetti. -o. Uh, as that happens, uh, Kale Frith kind of uh, storms into the room. Lord Samson? My husband? My husband? Have you heard the news? What is it, my lady? My niece! My niece has arrived. She has just entered the castle. Fully guard in, uh, in furs. <laughs> she looks quite chilly. And if you look down from the window, you can see, uh, in addition 
to what looks to be a bunch of uh, kind of British or you know English knights. I don't know if you can call it England yet, but um, you can see uh, Elfless along with like a, a, an emissary kind of coming into the castle, like through the through the gates. Along with you know, probably a couple dozen knights and and their retinues. We are truly blessed to be visited uh, by your niece. Come, let us welcome her in from the cold and see what news she brings from your homeland. A few minutes go by, and um, you guys are now standing kind of down in the like in the, the throne room area. Um, Charlemagne's pro probably talking with the uh, Wally of Saragossa, kind of in a meeting. Uh, Kaelfrith is there. Uh, maybe the Italians are there, kind of doing their business. And uh, Elphus kind of comes in and embraces Kaelfrith, and uh, they give each other a kiss and stuff. And uh, Elphus takes off her cloak, and the, the snow all kind of falls onto the ground, and the servant kind of mops it up very quickly. Oh, it was so good to see you, sweet niece. I trust that your journeys were pleasant. <laughs> no, they were certainly not pleasant. Uh, frigid, wet, long, dirty comes to mind, but this area of Northern Europe is uh, breathtaking, if I should say so. And Kaelfrith uh, agrees. It's not the uh, English coastline, but it uh, is beautiful nonetheless. And... Um, Elfwith kind of says, is it true what, what I hear? A messenger arrived in Wessex not two months ago. You have wed Kaelfrith? And she certainly agrees. Did the Pope wed you guys? I had asked for a high-ranking person. We never really settled yeah. on that, so yeah. I'll let you decide. Yes, in Rome, no less. And Elfwith kind of uh, laughs. And there would certainly be like a uh, uh, a page or some sort of messenger there, a herald uh, who would find Samson. And uh, he, he finds Samson. Uh, so Samson of Verdun? Yes, that is me. What uh, can I do for you, sir? Uh, King Kegadwalla of Wessex sends his blessings. I humbly accept his blessings and Lament that he could not be there in Italy, in Rome, for the wedding of his sister, but uh, I am humbled by her saying yes, and more humbled by someone is like the Pope to wed us. As you can see, the Lord has blessed us with child. Uh, I am told by the healer that uh, she grows larger every day with strong children. Of course. Of course. But travel, he kind of... Uh, perhaps his beard. Travel indeed may be out of the question. King Cadwalla had hoped that you would pay him a visit this summer in England, across the Channel. It has been some time since he saw his sister, and making power for allies on the continent is... well, has come at a most opportune time. He currently deals with raiders from Northumbria, and also from Mercia to the west. I am aware that he was having issues with uh, Saxons, and a long time ago I pledged my sword to him if he uh, were ever to call on it in dealing with these Saxons, and if that is what he needs, I will not shy away from that duty, but uh, I must speak with my king first of it. Uh, as you can see, Lady Chelfrith is heavy with child. I do not believe travel is the best idea, but... Uh, we shall see what the spring brings, no? Of course, of course, my lord. I will let you be about on your pleasantries. Your new wife and her niece certainly have some catching up to do. And I could use a warm cup of spiced wine after that journey. Indeed, please, let me have one of the pages fetch you some uh, spiced wine for you to warm yourself by the fire. Rene can't help himself, but he, he 
Ah, uh, Samson, uh, perhaps you could introduce me to your, uh, your relations? Are you speaking to Lady Ellsworth here? Oh, of course. <laughs> she is not available, my friend. I am sorry. I simply, wish, I simply wish to be introduced. What is this? This is uh, my friend, Sir Renier Legree. He is here of Ardon. Ah. And she kind of stops her chit-chat with Kelfrith for the minute and uh, gives you a curtsy, Renier. <laughs> my lord. Well met. I did not know there was such beauty on your isles as the two of you have displayed. Hmm. Well, perhaps if you would have stayed on the Isle of Wight, uh... While I was with King Cadwalla defeating uh, his foe there, you would have uh, witnessed the beauty of both Lady Chelfrith and Lady Elswith. I wished I would have. I uh, was caught back by my king. Uh, but uh, perhaps even that would be worth treason. He kind of gives a chuckle and a smile. Samson doesn't mention the reason he went back to Frankie. It's because him and uh, <laughs> he had William it. got fucking yeah. curb stomped by Dream Wolf. <laughs> because that's what a nice night yeah. he doesn't mention that. But, uh, well, perhaps you will come with me in time. I know you are anxious to get to Lombardy, but uh, if possible, and with the king's permission, I will make my way to uh, Wessex at some point. Uh, perhaps I will. Mm -hmm. Elspeth uh, kind of laughs a little bit and uh, she she grabs a cup of spiced wine from the page. Uh, it was on its way over to the uh, to the messenger. <laughs> she swipes it. It's the king's daughter. She does what the fuck she wants. And she, like, uh, takes a sip of it and looks to her and yay. And says, ah, but duty above all. No doubt. Yes, visit Wessex on your own time, but your King Charlemagne no doubt has duties for you here. How many manors do you hold, Sir and oh, I hold several manors in, uh, in Francia, and I am uh, holding Lombard for him currently. Oh, is that true? On my way in, I spoke with King Charlemagne's uncle, Duke Bernard of Brabant. He seems certain that uh, Lombard in northern Italy would be his. Uh, we will see. Uh, it is uh, up for debate, but uh, I am the one who uh, certainly uh, avoided the bloodshed at Friuli. And uh, yes, it is, uh, it is talk for us. Uh, Frankish min, do not concern yourself. Just simply uh, save me a dance for later. Somebody sidles up next <laughs> to you. Uh, save, a, save a dance for who? Oh, this is Earswith, uh, the daughter of the King of Wessex. Oh, my daughter. King of Wessex. Ah, I'm pleased to make you acquaintance, Earswith. Where is your caretaker? Where is your nanny? She, I think Else was like 14, if I remember or something. She was 15, yeah. So she'd be 16 now? Uh, yeah, that sounds maybe? right. 16, 17, yeah. She'd be 17 now, so I guess she's, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say Elena said it was a 20, right? Uh, I believe so, you did. Uh, uh, no, you said she's 17, I think. So maybe the same age, I guess. Uh Okay, well, she still says it. She still says yeah. it as a jab. Oh, this is uh, um, this. But... Excuse me, this is Elena Vietti. Uh, she is uh, a, she is um, a lady of Lombard. Mm, a lady. She introduces herself, Princess Elfrith of Wessex. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Elena just, Sir Renier, could I have your? attention for a moment oh yes of course excuse me my lady he kind of bows to Elswith and kind of uh, steps to the side looks at Samson like I fucked up gives him that look and uh, 
Yeah, <laughs> gives the, you sure did. Look. <laughs> and kind of steps back. He's like, hey, yes, my Lenny Elena. Um, Elena says, your eyes are as big as saucers, Renier, but that's not why I'm here. I can handle myself, especially when faced by a challenging, impudent savage from the British Isles. But anyway, I think we have a solution to your Duke Bernard problem. Yes, it is a problem indeed. I have been just uh, informed by Elspeth. Uh, it is good to uh, talk to everyone to uh, know what is happening. <coughs> <clears throat> happening at court. It's got the plague. Yeah, I got the plague. I got syphilis. Um, I'm trying to give you. Shut up, you! How dare and you? <laughs> he says, uh, "Yes, uh, and uh, she has told me that Bernard is certainly looking to move in on northern Italy and uh, take what is rightfully ours." Indeed, he is. At least, he was. My uncle can be very convincing, both with the dagger and with poison, but also with the arts of the council chamber and the bedchamber. Apparently there is a Saxon noblewoman who is quite fetching that the Duke of Brabant had in his carriage on the way back from Saxony. Can you repeat that? He said he has who was it with him? So, ba so ba basically, <coughs> basically, with that crit intrigue role, Sir Leandro has gathered that the Duke Duke Bernard has been spending time with a super super beautiful like at nineteen uh, Saxon noblewoman, um, who he just like basically freed and she accompanied him uh, on the way back. And it's probably in court somewhere. So would that um, would that be in poor taste to have a Saxon noblewoman here? Like, oh, well, not necessarily in poor taste if it converted because King Charlemagne sure. was giving That's right. lands and stuff to the nobles in Saxony. Um, but in real life, it does appear that Charlemagne, that that Brabant is his favorite uncle. Mm -hmm. And I guess was the was the father of his favorite cousins, Adelhard and Walla. So I think that Leo, Leandro's angle is going to be to try to get him to take his eyes off northern Italy and maybe take Saxony, an extra duch duchy in Saxony, and marry this. Leave whoever he's with now. But he's already married, Saxony right? Woman. We already established that. Yeah, but yeah, he's already, yeah, he's already he's already married. But it looks like in real life he did get married to a Saxon noblewoman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rene says, hmm, this could work. Uh, it would keep him closer to home. Uh, I think uh, perhaps uh, Charlemagne would think that uh, Lombard is uh, perhaps not as important uh, with the uh, fighting uh, going on with uh, the Saxons, which they will always be a problem. Which uh, I think it could work for us. Indeed. The combination of both military might and genius and romantic love to a Saxon noblewoman would pro provide the perfect excuse for King Charles to send his favorite uncle to the north and not to the southeast. Now I have one question. Your friend Sir Samson, his hate of the Saxons is legendary. What would be his opinion of this plan? I think he would do what uh, what was best for his good friend Rene. Uh, he uh, certainly wishes to kill Saxons, and I do not mind the killing Saxons as well. Uh, he probably would not uh, like to have see a Saxon in court, but he would uh, not overstep himself to uh, challenge a duke or the king. And how do you think we should deal with uh, the Duke's current Amor? 
his wife. Yeah, he's he, ah, he, uh, he. I do not know, and I do not want to know. Is there is there one that's like? Uh, uh, there, I think there's a a virtue like about keeping secrets. Oh, uh, temperate or something. Uh, I'm not good at that. I don't think. No, I'm good at temperate. Mm -hmm. um, deceitful or honest. Yeah, probably. Just give yourself a check in temper. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, he just doesn't. He yeah, doesn't. Good. Give, give you once an arb, arb an, uh deceitful as well. Yeah. I think it'd be more deceitful because you're kind of keeping. Yeah. You want temperate and deceitful, you know, or just deceitful? Just, 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 just okay. deceitful. Yeah, he, he, he's Machia Machiavellian Italian. Yeah, yeah, they're getting in, they're somebody. getting their hooks in me. He just, he kind of, he, uh, he, I don't really want to, I don't want to be a part of that. I do have a spy uh, now. So Samson, what? Yeah, so Samson, what are you doing as you kind of? Uh, so you see, basically, Renier is talking to the princess and kind of. Uh, there seems to be some verbal sparring between the princess and Lady Elena, and then Elena pulls him to the side from the from the from the corner of the room by himself. Leandro is just sipping his wine, look like looking at everybody. <laughs> so as um... got vile vials of poison. <laughs> <laughs> Samsonov is probably ignorant of what's going on with uh, Renier's conversation um, for once not being on the battlefield or feeling in any sort of imminent danger. He most likely is, is talking with Chael Frith and Ailswith, um, just learning about what's going on the aisle uh, in this place called North Umbria and um, East Anglia, I believe, was the other place. Uh, and really not 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 paying attention to to the scheming that is going on uh, seemingly right under his nose i have to roll something i just i just have to let's see yeah okay yeah renee's gonna probably try to bang elswith if he can get away with it let's see what hers is He's, uh, he's right down the middle. Ten. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, Renee. How does it happen? It does happen. Well, yeah. later on, he, he like, uh, well, let's just, let's, let's get past this, this, uh, per, uh, petition and stuff, and maybe, I don't know, unless you want to fast forward it. How's this... Why is this fire playing again? It's crazy. The fire in his loins. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he does what he always does. He dances with him. He's the greatest dancer of all time. And uh, Give me a dance. Yeah, he's a good dancer. And, uh, you know, he just... He keeps... Uh, he, he he actually approached Leandro, and he, he says, uh, you know, Elena, she is uh, hot-blooded, and I need to uh, make some uh, contacts here at court. Uh if you could keep her occupied for me <laughs> and uh then he's going to just turn it on to uh Ailswith while Lena's away and then he sneaks away and uh gives it to her um yeah not being any of the wiser stamps and he's just like oh lady uh lady elena why don't you sit with my wife lady jailfriz and uh Niece, Lady Elswith, she is the princess of Wessex, and perhaps you two can uh, have some shared experiences. <laughs> or, excuse me, Lady <laughs> Elswith, have some oh, shared uh, okay. experiences. Did you give me your dance? Oh, I didn't, I didn't give it to you, but I will. Yeah, may I'm maybe to, she I, won't. I know B&B, &B, we don't do that many roles, but we need to get some Okay, roles uh, so this would be, hold on, okay, so this is courtly, so I get a plus five, so that's a 21, so hold on. Man, you're good I at dancing. Good at dancing. It's the only thing I'm good at. Um, well, I succeed. 
Oh, that should have been 21, but yeah. You sweep her, you sweep her right off her feet. Yep. If we're looking for... Um... Like, now like the real Renye. She says you right there, bro. <laughs> That's right. That's what he's going he's gonna to have to do. Um, if we're looking for check marks, I think um, Samson, and I don't know how appropriate this would be, he's going to talk to the Duke. Um, I'm my Duke. I, I'm about to have a little Duke Thierry. Hey, Duke. 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 My Duke, I know. I'm, uh, my wife is about to give birth to my first legitimate child. Assuming it is a boy, as I have been given a boy, and uh, all of my natural children, they will need a uh, place to be as they grow older. And I ask two things of you, and I hope it is not out of turn, but uh, I ask your permission to raise a manor for each of my children and hold it in their name until they are knighted, at which time it will be granted for them. Uh, then they could be perhaps a uh, vassal knight of myself. Uh, the second thing is... Uh, as I am away frequently, I would hope that uh, you would take them as pages and eventually as squires within your own court so they can receive a proper education before they are knighted themselves. Hmm. Yeah, so he certainly gives sense to that. So basically, yeah, he's looking to raise four manners. I don't know how much that costs. I'll worry about that later. But then also, in the event there's ever a chapter two, they would get uh, one of the better you know, tables to, to roll off of in terms of, uh, what is it like officer Duke or some shit like that. He's basically looking to get his natural children, some fancy, uh, starting benefits on the early character generation tables. Mm -hmm. The bastard kids, right? Yeah. My four bass. Well, only three of them right now. Cause the other one's like two, but the others are, I think, um, in 777 will be nine and eight. The three boys will be, the twins will be eight. And then the oldest one will be nine, which is right around the time you become a page. Yeah. Give me attitude, Lord. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you fucking kidding me? They're, they're bastards. Yep. That's what he says. Can't be doing that. He says, you have your own child, soon to be born, to a powerful woman with strong ties across the narrow ocean. Why do you, why do you burden me with these bastards? <laughs> my, I ask for your forgiveness, my lord. I was just looking to see that they were done right in the world, but I understand the error of my ways and I will not bring it up again. Perhaps my brother, I think, I think Bernard is his brother. Duke Thierry is uncle of Charlemagne, and Bernard is as well. I don't know if they're both of the same bloodline. I think I think they are. But he says, why don't you send them to Saxony? Because uh, he's heard rumors that, uh, that Bernard is uh, starting to get a little bit fond of, of Saxons, Saxon women. I do not see how one can find a Saxon woman beautiful, but if it is required to breed them out, uh, if sword and conversion do not work, we can just simply erase the Saxons through childbirth. Of but I will find my own uh, answer for them. I humbly apologize for that. So I assume that's a no on the manners and the uh, page. That's a no. Oof. It's a bad roll. Yeah, the one one roll that would fail. Uh, yeah. Uh, with that, he kind of uh, ends the conversation, understanding that hey, you know, that's that. Um, and instead, he's kind of maybe used some of his intrigue to all of a sudden get dirt or figure out who this Saxon princess or Saxon woman is that Duke Terry just mentioned. Before we forget, can I roll uh, childbirth for Elswith? Just, just, or not, or just pregnancy? Yeah. Um, what is the? Um, it, I'm, I'm looking at the childbirth one. That's not what I should be looking at, right? Roll one d twenty. Is it on the childbirth table? It 
It's uh, close to it. It's like the next page. I, I'll tell you what happens. Roll 1d20. It's pretty high. You got a kid. You got a kid. <laughs> <laughs> this game is insane. Yeah. Oh, you'll like you. You'll like this chick. I can't. I can't. I, she's not a part of my plan, though. That's this is not. Uh... Well, this just that's the dice. This is the beauty of the role playing games. I'm getting the Saxon beauty ready to go here. So um, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> Sometime during the Mayfair, uh, Renee does want to try to talk to King Charlemagne and Duke Terry. That would be appropriate. Do you want me to roll intrigue to see if I dig up dirt on this Saxon whore? Uh, yeah. <laughs> roll intrigue. <laughs> roll intrigue to the Saxon whore. Man, my fi my family tree is getting out of control. That is a success. Uh, as soon as I find out Elsa was pregnant, keep in mind um, she's not going back to England until that baby is born, and uh, that baby's not going with her. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we will see about that. So, you... Um, so... Adney... She's 17, you said? So she's born in 1770? Or not, I mean 60? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let me look and see how, how um, I mean, if I, if I search. I mean, <laughs> She'd a, be 760, I think. She's 17. Called in 12. Um, so she was mentioned. Um, Cadwater. Daughter Elswith. Did I not write down how old she was? Uh, you said 17 earlier, but I mean, I don't know. Originally, know, when you well, she introduced her, which she was... She was real young. I remember she was, like, really young, like, super young. Yeah, but you now, gave me the... Like, so, that was in, in... That was in session 12, where you met her. Um, Paladin 13... Sometimes, let me see here, Paladin 13. So that was in 773. And she was 50. So however however old I said she was now, she'll be, what, four years older? So she'd be 19. Oh. 777, she'd be 19. <clears throat> she was young. She was like 14 or something. She might have been like 12. I remember saying she was really We can young. just say she's 17. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's... You say, you say whatever she she is, and that's yeah. what she is. Yeah, 17 is fine. All right. Um, yeah. Because I, I remember making her young enough that I was like, oh, you'd have to wait for a while <laughs> to have kids with her even. Yeah. Because I wanted, I wanted to give you that choice because I think she was like 12, so she'd be like 17 now. She half flowered. She half flowered. She sure has. Renier checked. Yep, Renier made sure. Yeah. Um, so Adney. Adney the uh this chick here. The Saxon. Mm-hmm. So she is a the dirt you the dirt you dig up, Samson, is uh, she was Rumwold's wife. Oh. Rumwold, Rumwold <laughs> the, stag. the stag. You killed her husband. She doesn't know. Yeah, she doesn't know that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's she is widowed because of that reason. And uh, in order to land, make a soft landing, and not get executed or whatever she is converted and uh attached herself to duke bernard that's what you dig up on her um you want to dig up anything else which what, you, you you succeeded in your intrigue right i did let me do the character generator on her real quick uh npc setup npc generator 
All right, I'm gonna look and see if she has like any character flaws that look really bad. <laughs> right, she is. <clears throat> oh, geez, she's pretty middle of the road for most things. Uh, her indulgent is it? Her indulgence fifteen. That's the. She likes the finer things in life. She likes she likes the finer things. Uh, and she's also a selfish. Her selfish is. No, no, her selfish seven. So it's opposite. So she's generous. Um, uh, she's down the middle of the road for most stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, lustful. Her lustful is eleven. Her li she's a little lazier. Lazy is eleven, but that's only it's only like that's nothing. 11. That's practically that's nothing. Off. Yeah, yeah. So we're like just indulgent. Indulgence, the big the big character fall. Yeah. So um, her her clothing and stuff, like you can see in, in the token, she has that circlet over her, her brow and stuff. It's like way above her station, and it's, she she likes the nice things. Basically, as the winter uh, goes, and he slowly digs up some information on Adney, he's uh, he's going to hit the rumor mill hard that basically. She's a slut who married a weak man, Rumvald the Stag, uh, and after he pathetically was killed by Samson the Saxon Slayer, uh, she hopped on the first Frankish cock she could find, um, which just happened to be Duke Bernard. <laughs> Post is like, Post is on YouTube. And, and it's like sunk, sunk her dirty whore claws into him <laughs> and uh she she's known to drink uh heavily and be indulgent and in no time she'll grow fat on frankish food so no man would want her even though of course no man would sensible man would want her now considering you know she's a she's gross like bit she's like cersei lannister <laughs> yeah. is it obvious these yeah, are she's rumors the... coming from samson yeah, Sam Samson's just, you know, and I, I'm making sure that they're reaching Duke Bernard's wife. Yeah. Assuming she's there. I'm going to see and if that, she gets po poisoned or not. <laughs> the, those will kind of be the things that are like behind the scenes and out loud he'll, he'll definitely make sh talk about the successful Saxon campaigns and how he killed uh, such a weak man in from Volstagg and anyone, you know, I, he pities anyone that would be associated with such a pathetic man. Shoo. Assassination attempt fails. <sighs> on Adney? Yeah, on, uh, no, on uh, uh, Brabant's uh, uh, other wife. Is that common? Does that become column in knowledge? No. No, but uh, Leandra looks a little dejected at one point when you see him in the spring. <laughs> it's like in CK3, you build up all this stuff for an assassination. Fails. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, Bernard has this woman that uh, is kind of a open secret that he is with her, and he has his wife as well. But Nobody gives him too much heat about it because she's beautiful. But then in the back hallways, it's also whispered that she's uh, she's an alky and uh, soon her hips will grow heavy and she won't be attractive. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, Samson's pretty, pretty salty about it, but um, he's also smart enough to know that uh, he can't really directly challenge a duke over something like that so he's gonna he's gonna avoid her but that won't stop him from uh running his mouth in you know the corners the darker corners of the the winter palace yeah i just want to i just so, wanna talk to the king or whatever uh, la last thing it, it does <coughs> enough time pass for uh samson to realize that elsworth is uh pregnant does, is that discovered by Chael for Elther? When did you hook up with her? They, at the winter or the or the Mayfair? Because they came in the winter. Uh, whenever, whenever the pretty pretty soon to when she was there first. 
Yeah, it probably wouldn't have, have just been one time be... either, you know. Yeah, because it would have been, I mean, May, it's like we're talking four or five months, right? Maybe a little tiny baby bump, because she's probably very tiny to begin with. Samson started noticing her, like, looking ill in the morning when uh, they broke their fast with uh, Lady Chailfrith, and, you know, once the spring came, the, the twins were born, and honored her with uh, naming the daughter after her, and, and she uh, reacted with that honor by vomiting onto her plate and then excusing herself. And uh, whether or not, you know, Samson understands what's happening, perhaps Chaelfrith, just experiencing it, realizes what's going yeah, on. And you've... Whether she tells Samson or not is another yeah, thing. Yeah, and y you know Renee well enough and he's been you've noticed you know they they dance every once in a while and you know y you probably put two and two together knowing your good friend there Renier, yeah. may i have a word for one moment yeah renee would be oblivious because he's just dumb and uh uh, yes, of course. What is it? I'm uh, still waiting for my audience with the king. Uh, perhaps when you are waiting for this audience, did you uh, do something that was incredibly stupid? Uh, me? Of course not. I am. You have a good head on my shoulders, of course. Hmm. Because an interesting thing has uh, happened. Um, my wife tells me that it is quite possible that uh, Lady Elswith is with a child. Would you know anything about that? Uh, you with uh, 800 <laughs> bastards approximately? He, he, he's drinking wine and just <laughs> spits it out. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, do, um, yes, uh, well, I, it could not be mine. Oh, my, my, my lord, what am I going to do with you, Renier? First, you say you want to retire from battle, but I hope not, because you're going to end up with a sword in your side from all these women you keep impregnating, my friend. This one happens to be a princess. Oh, Do you know what this means? Not really. She lives very far away from Lombard. This means she cannot leave until after the child is born. Why is this? Because she is to be wed, as a king's daughter is to be done, and who will want to wed some slut that spread her legs for the first Frankish knight that danced with her fairly competently? I am quite uh, more than a competent dancer, I'll have you know. <sighs> Friend, I need to build a chapel at my church for you to attend to. I, I am sorry. I did not realize it would happen. I, uh, I uh, tempted to be careful, but you know, sometimes too much wine and uh, you remain inside too long. What, what do you? When did this happen? I, I think uh, I don't know. About ten times, maybe. <laughs> Spits his wine out ten times. My God, man! I, I will have to tell Lady Chelfit to put an escort on her, and you perhaps twenty-four hours a day. Uh, I guess if there's some sort of lining, she cannot become more pregnant. Well, then why would you do such a thing? At least uh, let your good have friend have some fun before he has to go back to Italy. I don't know, perhaps, uh, so the King Cadwalla of Wessex doesn't hunt you down and geld you, you idiot? I do not think, uh, he would do such a thing. I... I will be very far away. Never underestimate the power of a scorned king and his, uh, damaged goods. Hmm. He grunts. Perhaps we could blame it on someone else? Bernard Brabant, perhaps? <laughs> He's too busy with that fat whore. 
Yes, by the way, your slanderous words are causing me some issues. I want him to marry her so he will stay in Saxony. My friend, why in the bloody hell would you want that to happen? So he does not want to come to Lombard and take what is rightfully mine? Samson kind of sits and thinks for a minute as I pull up my sheet to roll on what he's going Perhaps to do. Perhaps we are both idiots. We have both fucked each other over in this session. I'm looking for something to roll. I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> now. I don't even know. Uh, I don't think Elspeth is going to get banked up, but knocked up. I wasn't even going to have her come. I just had her token, I, and I didn't have a messenger token. <laughs> I, I'm going to do trusting versus reckless, and whichever is better is which way Samson's going to decide to go. So here's me deciding to trust Renye. Okay. And here's me deciding to do something possibly stupid at a later date. You. <laughs> He just kind of sits there and stews for a little bit. I will take your words under advisement, uh, my friend. But uh, I know what you want. And it is a Dutch in Lombard. It is a noble goal. But uh, what you ask is a lot of me. It is simply... She is simply a woman. Just do not say anything. It does not matter. It is just... She is just some woman. She probably is a whore. Who cares? It is not the point. She is a Saxon woman. You know that means everything to me. <sighs> she is a woman. She is not one of your dream wolves to kill. Elena is clueless somehow and doesn't even <laughs> notice that she's pregnant. <laughs> Thank the gods. It is time to leave. Yes, I think it is wise that uh, Aelsworth, go, Aelsworth goes with my wife, Jelfrith, to Castle Triarch, and uh, she can stay there visiting her aunt until this uh, matter blows over. Um, we will see when and if I am allowed to go to England, uh, when we will be able to leave. So, Leandro has no clue she's pregnant either. He's too busy trying to kill people. Murder sack. Murder sacks. <laughs> uh, Renee says, yeah, when she has the child, um, perhaps you will bring her to me or him to me. I will raise the child. I uh, love all my children. T tell me all of their names right now without thinking about it. Go. Of, uh, Yes, uh, let me open my family tree. <laughs> <laughs> Do love family. Oh, that Do is a good family, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fail, fail, fail. Uh, love family. Oh, that's right. No, that's Just attitude. Okay. Just right. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Attitude. Yes. Well, yes. there is Drogon, and there is um, there is uh, Rosfind, and um. The twins. Yeah. And and what are the twins' names? Uh, their names are um, uh, Ibert and. No, that is not correct. Oh, I had well. How do you know? Ah, uh, perhaps because I pay attention to your children uh, with more uh, respect and reverence than you do. How do you know? You're too busy fucking anything that lays down in the stables for you, my friend. It's, I never had sex in the stables this time. She is a princess. She is uh, certainly uh, more respectable than that. There was the one time in the kitchens, but uh, other than that, it was all on a bed. Ah, please tell me it was after I ate, my friend. I could not say. Uh, it was the night we had the uh, roasted boar. 
I would say that uh, mm. I would not have eaten that more afterwards, if you know what I mean. If there was some extra <sighs> spice and sauce. <laughs> no, just, just too, too, too much, my friend. <sighs> I will... I will think on this. <laughs> I need to find myself a church and pray and seek for guidance. Ah, William would be disappointed in me for sure. God is watching you. <laughs> he, is, he is looking up from heaven. I am sorry, William. I love you, my friend. But a man must uh, has needs on this earth. See, you, you had Lady Elenia from Italy. I still do. She... <sighs> Why choose one when you can have them all? That is wrong, my friend. You will, it will catch up with you one day. You will see. Well, until that day comes, I will have uh, as much fun as I possibly can. <sighs> Very well. We will talk no more of this. Perhaps uh, another time. Uh, yes, I must uh, speak to the king before the end of our uh, winter court. I will talk to you ah, later. Well. Yes, good luck. Uh, try not to fuck his wife or children <laughs> while you are there. And he kind of just, you know, storms <laughs> off, kind of just grumbling and pregnant princess sex whore. <laughs> Leaves <laughs> and yay to deal with the king. We got to say to Charlemagne. Yeah, he would. Um, when he gets his audience uh, with Charlemagne and Duke Thierry, he uh, respectfully he brings Leandro and Elena as well, of course, and um, he uh, bows deeply. My king, I uh, come to uh, talk to you about. Uh, Spioli? Spoleto? <laughs> I'm gonna have to write that down. So, Friuli? Um, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, um... Leandro's, um, it's like, which, 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 which county is that one? You do get an audience with the king. Um, uh, give me a recognize check. Spiletto. Okay. Recognize me. Yeah, give me a recognize because there's two people leaving. I'll see if you recognize. Uh, what the heck? What's recognize? Oh God, um, that's common. Yeah, that's not. Oh, yeah, nice. Give yourself yeah. a check. Um, you see uh, two brothers leaving. Um, the the Ali uh, the w w Wabi whatever the name is of Saragossa is there. Uh, the Moorish mm -hmm. guy. And uh, there are two Frankish uh, brothers leaving. You know them as Bassan and Basile. And they are um, uh, two minor nobles uh, that live in Bastogne. And um, they are known to be good friends of King Charlemagne. And you overhear them saying that uh, they will be uh, leaving for, it, for Spain uh, within a few weeks. You kind of overhear the, their plans as you're walking in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm going to use that to my advantage, I think. I'm going to try to. Um, yeah, he comes in. He bows. Uh, my king, thank you for receiving me this day. I do appreciate it. Yes, of course, Sir Renier. You've had a busy last couple of years. Oh, it is uh, God's good will to set me with my friends, Sir Samson and Sir William, rest his soul, and uh, us together we have done many things in his name and yours, of course, my lord. Mm. 
Yes. I'm aware you have done a great many things, Sir Renier. Uh, yes, uh, I wish to speak about uh, Lombard. I am listening. I have. Uh, it's just you. It's just you. It's just you and him now. So he, yeah. it's you, you're speaking. Uh, yeah. Kindly, so. uh, it uh, You do know what happened when the, we went to. Uh, uh, what's the first county that we? Um, uh, oh, Freely. Freely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was attacked at the dinner table, and uh, with minimal uh, casualties, we were able to pacify the rebels. Uh, it is a great honor that I was able to do this for you, my lord. And he... Yes. Yeah, good. <coughs> yes. He says, Rotgun Vietti. He met his end. Like a coward should. I thank you very much for that. The northern provinces of Italy are famed for their bounty in both harvest and the creative arts they'll be a fine addition to my empire <laughs> <laughs> yes my lord i think so exactly but you need someone to uh, perhaps uh, guide it for you make sure there are no more problems with uh, northern Italy or the rest of Italy and the Byzantines to the south. I do believe my lord, uh, excuse me for overhearing, but it seems that you will be uh, sending men to Spain. I fear uh, that uh, with uh, wars to the Saxons and the Saracens that we could become uh, spread out too far. But I believe that if uh, we have a secure Lombard, then uh, we will not have any problems. Uh, wars on three fronts, my lord, would even be uh, difficult for the great King Charlemagne. Indeed. It was my first thought to put my uncle in charge of northern Italy. Bernard would do a excellent job although now i think that he is becoming more inclined to take to the northern realms spending more time with that blonde-headed saxon adney either way it is important that spoleto and benevento and fiuli remain pacified you speak much wisdom the saxons are not yet fully defeated would you kind still lives and no doubt flourishes in the court of the king of Denmark. Now to the south, the Moors in Spain are becoming more and more more and more uh, bold in their moves along the mountain to the north of that realm. My decision to aid Ibn al-Arabi of Saragossa is a selfish one. I need to know more about that realm. We have long ignored it. But why would you be the best choice, René Legree? After all, it seems recently your decisions have been quite reckless. He kind of leans forward. I still do not know what to do with this young princess that you have with child. He, uh, he yeah, blinks. Obviously. Ah, yeah, uh, uh, my king. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I uh, do apologize. Uh, I, uh, it was not intentional, of course. I, uh, uh, not intentional. Keep it in your pants. You don't see Oliver Roland walking around here with ten thousand bastard <laughs> children, do you? Uh, yes, I, I do have my faults, my lord. I am not uh, a chivalrous knight, but I am a knight that serves you uh, with all honor that you deserve, my lord, and I put you above myself in all things. And I would say that I would take a wife, uh, a Lombard wife, to pacify the region. Uh, Lady Elena is a good choice. Her uncle is, she is, uh, he is, uh, loyal to you and he would serve as a count of benevetto 
and uh, I could uh, assign someone else for uh, Fioli. I, it is um, I the people there, they respect me and uh, they like me, the Lombards even. And uh, I have brought you this uh, gift of, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, um, uh, not plunder, but. Uh, Bottom yeah. some booty. Uh, I have <laughs> how many Libra that all those slaves get. I don't know. It's yeah. a lot. He's, he has, he like, people bring it in and it's just the you know treasure chest full chest of full. of yeah. coin uh, this is all for you my lord in your honor from uh, the uh, slaves that we have sold in our uh, Verdun uh, your uncle I would uh, say as uh, smart and uh, wise as he is uh, did want to put all these men to the sword uh, this will instead uh, help your battle war chest against the Saxons and now the Saracens. Mm. He kind of stands up from his throne and walks towards you and dips his hand in the gold and run, lets it run through his fingers. My uncle Bernard he is indeed quick to anger. And it has been long said about you, Renier, that your judgment after dark leaves much to be desired but that your head at the council table and in negotiations can be trusted is this true i would believe so my lord i believe that duke we thierry agrees yes. we all have our faults even myself just so happens that yours hangs in the dangly bits between your legs either way i do not trust leandro but i do know this i trust his greed his greed knows no bounds. And I think that he will be loyal to the Frankish throne as long as his family is taken care of and there is peace in northern Italy. He is a man that is a purveyor of wines and fine cheeses and art and other delicacies. Keep him happy with a county of his own and your plan sounds reasonable to me. Renier Legree. Yes. Now, I also do not want a war with the king and the British Isles. Come to me with a solution to your Elfwith problem, and the Duchy of Spoleto is yours. I believe I already have one, my lord. Uh, Samson would keep her cloistered until she has the child, and I will take uh, the child with, to Lombard with me, and then she will return home. She can simply say she was uh, visiting her uh, her aunt. But King Caswalla's men, will they not know? I do they not uh, I do not know uh, perhaps they should stay here um, while she goes to uh, Verdun with uh, Sir Simpson or we can have them fall ill he nods he, he again picks up his hands and he says uh, he's going to use the wrong term he's going to use a, a Saxon term no, uh, yeah, I guess it's Saxon, a Wessex, an old English term. He takes up this gold and he says, This gold would have been yours, Renier. And the Duchy of Spoleto will still be yours. But consider your portion of gold ware guild for paying off Elfwith's men. I will buy their silence. And those who are too honest will find a death on the way home to England. He frowns, expecting to get some percentage of the gold, clearly. <laughs> he's, he's using your gold yeah, to pay off all the English. Like, uh, yes, my king. It is a fair trade. I will make better decisions in the future. I pray to God. And he does the sign of the cross. Love God. Oh, fuck. 
That's not good. <laughs> I think sure he just kind of rolled. Yeah, he did, he did. He meant, he mean takes, it. Probably not. You know. <laughs> yeah, he probably didn't mean it. That's fine. I'll take his gold to pay off yeah. all these uh, all these guys. They're gonna tattle on the indulgent seventeen year old and he locked up. All right. Anything yeah. else? So situation. Uh, so we're going into seven seventy seven. Probably no big military actions that year. Uh, the two brothers have been sent out from Bastogne to go uh, to meet with the Moors. That's one thing that's going on. Uh, Elf with is with child, and that situation has been paid off and taken care of. But she, she can't go home to England until she's had this kid. So you guys are kind of slow rolling Cadwalla's request to visit. I guess you can't go until she has this kid. I will not be going. Um, yeah, he did still invite Yeah, him, so but I will not be going, sense. I would say that. You don't know me. Uh, Samson would be like, uh, no, sir. <laughs> you, you need to go to Lombardy and do your thing. Yeah. Uh, things in Saxony are actually pretty good right now. Uh, more and more Saxon nobles convert and are given um, uh, manners, kind of expanding your frontier that way. Although, uh, would you kind still, still is in Denmark. And uh, Duke Bernard and uh, Adney are getting hot and heavy. And it sounds like they will end up going to Saxony. Um, but uh, the rumor is that Bernard's wife is pissed about it. And Elena and Leandro are very conniving, but they don't know that Elfleth is pregnant. Is that it? That's I think that's it. it. And Spoleto is yours. Call me Duke Renee. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I would marry Actard to uh, one of his daughters, as was uh, arranged. And then uh, I would uh, try to uh, advance myself by um, perhaps marrying Elena. All right. We'll end it there. Excellent. Nice. I thought it was going to be a real short one, and that 